Hey everyone, and welcome to a new video, or a not so new video if you're watching this in the future. Today's video is the start of a new series on noise and its many derivatives, as well as how it is used in pretty much everything you have ever used or looked at electronically. In this first video, we'll be looking at how deterministic machines can fake non deterministic outcomes. I close my eyes and see Computers are stupid. They do only exactly what we tell them to do, and only that, as it would be rather inconvenient for us if they did anything else or anything more. This is known as deterministic behavior, a system in which no randomness or variance is involved. This poses a problem when we do want some sense of randomness in our system. How can you do that when computers are completely deterministic? Enter. The pseudo-random number generator. Pseudo-random number generators, or PRNGs for short, are deterministic algorithms for generating fake random numbers, which sounds really weird at first, but it'll make sense in a little bit. Not all PRNGs are the same, but their goal is for the most part. So I'll be going over one PRNG in this video, and then you can pretend they all work that way, but first, a little bit of history. Like most computer science concepts, the first PRNG was invented by the man himself, John von Neumann, in 1949. He proposed the use of the middle square method. It starts by taking an initial integer, or seed as the tech bros like to call it. You then square this number and use the middle digits of the result as both the random number and the new seed for the next PRNG output. Also, if the squared number has an odd number of digits, you can just prepend a zero to it. For example, take the seed 8580. We square that and get the result, uh, shit, 73,616,500. And taking the middle digits, we get our random number and the next seed, which would be 6,165. As another example, we can use the seed 1000. Squaring that, we get uh, 1 million, which has an odd number of digits. So we prepend a zero to this, and then we take the middle digits to get our random number and next seed, which is zero. And now you can realize why this method for generating random numbers fucking sucks. Von Neumann got a lot of things right, but this one ain't it. He knew this, of course, he just didn't care to keep developing PRNGs as the middle square method was sufficient for his needs. Okay, with a little history out of the way, we can move on to an actual, real, modern pseudo-random number generator. But first, let's establish some aspects of PRNGs that we went over with the middle square method. PRNGs take in a seed to set the stage for the resulting random numbers. The PRNG is what operates on this seed, and then out comes a random result. This result isn't actually random at all though, of course, it's entirely deterministic because of the seed. The same seed will have the same result. This is actually very useful behavior, as interesting results of procedurally generated systems can be completely recreated with the same seed. Anyways, let's take a look at a PRNG known as the Linear Congruential Generator, or LCG for short. The LCG works by utilizing a discontinuous piecewise linear function, which sounds really complicated, but it just means a line that is not continuous. The generator is defined by the recursive relation x of n plus 1 equals a times x of n plus c mod m, where x of n plus 1 is the next random number, a is a multiplier constant of the previous random number or initial seed, c is a constant incrementer, and m is a constant that modulates the resulting number into a given period. Additionally, I like my random numbers in the range of 0 to 1, so we can divide this entire result by m to get that range. The values you decide to use for each of these parameters will wildly change the quality of the LCG, so I stole the values that Fortran and MATLAB use for their random number generator. To illustrate how the LCG works, let's use the seed 2, since it's the coolest number. 
2 gets put into the LCG as x of 0 multiplied by 8,121, incremented by 28,411, and modulated by 134,456. This result then becomes the new seed for the next iteration of the LCG, and before we return the number to be used, we divide it into the 0 to 1 range. To demonstrate that this LCG is in fact suitably random, I have plotted 100,000 generated numbers, and as we can see, there is a relatively equal distribution of numbers produced by the LCG with little to no bias. And if you'd like to see the code for this, it's in the description below. As you can see, LCGs are very nice and simple. They're extremely fast and use essentially no memory, as all they need to maintain state is 32 or 64 bits depending on implementation, but they aren't without their weaknesses. LCGs begin to crumble once they are used on a very large scale. They are only suitable for about a thousand random numbers in 32 bits and a little over 2 million for 64 bits. And that sounds like a lot of samples, but it's really not when you delve into large-scale Monte Carlo simulations. Additionally, LCGs aren't very suitable for on-GPU random number generating, as the LCG kind of requires you to maintain state, which isn't possible on the GPU. And if you care about generating random numbers on the GPU, you should look into hash functions. Personally, I use the, uh, the Zor shift algorithm. I like my fortune burning. Now you might be thinking, why is this video called noise and not pseudo random number generators? And that's a great question. Honestly, I don't really know the exact answer other than it's just a matter of semantics and context. Noise is used to refer to variance and stochasticism in the graphics world as well as data collection. This association becomes obvious when we visualize the LCG we created earlier as a texture. This image looks like a television without a signal, and that's because a television without a signal is visualizing the full range of frequencies on its screen. This is referred to as white noise because of how color works. White light is the combination of all colors, and in the case of the television, it is visualizing the combination of all frequencies at once. Tying this back to our random number generator, it is generating the full range of random numbers in the 0 to 1 range without any patterns or direction, hence why we could refer to it as white noise, and this relation will become more obvious in future videos in the series. Okay, if you need me to explain to you why random numbers are impressive or applicable in the real world, you may be, uh, not the pride of your friend group. But here's a quick list of applications for you. But having this random number generator or white noise is a very important foundation for a lot of amazing techniques and graphics that I will introduce to you in later videos. Anyways, that's all folks. I hope this video and series is as interesting to you as it is to me. If you haven't already, subscribe below so you can see when I post new videos and check out my other social media as well. But I gotta go now, so have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, uh, I don't really know what this is, I guess this is like a blog, uh, I'm recording this on my laptop so the, the quality is really bad, but anyways, I'm here staying in the uh, McMinimins Hotel in Portland, despite everything, uh, it's actually pretty cool, this is the room that the Silver Sun pickups stayed in, they played the song Lazy Eye, so all of the uh, lyrics to the song are like painted on the walls. It's pretty cool. I'd play the song for you, uh, but you, you know how YouTube is. I'm here for a, a concert. I'm seeing Tennis, the pop band. I also went to a, a Blazers game. It was a Blazers versus Golden State. 
it was pretty cool. Got to see uh, Steph Curry do some things. I don't know. I don't play basketball or watch it for that matter. I just got invited to the show. But I actually just got back from the tennis concert. And uh, it was pretty good. I'll play some uh, some clips that I recorded of my favorite song by them. That's uh, Modern Women, Modern Woman, excuse me. It's pretty good. You should listen to it. Again, I'd play it for you, but you know how YouTube is. Um, I also got some, some like art books and stuff at Powell's, which is like a really famous bookstore. I got uh, the first volume of the Bakemonogatari manga, which is pretty cool, as well as... Um, the art of The Last of Us 2, regardless of what you think of the game, it is a very, very impressive game visually. I also got the art of the, the first first game and the art of Death Stranding, which is a very big inspiration for me, tech art-wise. Uh, from the concert, I got... Uh, one of every vinyl, which um, the lady at the merch stand, she actually gave me a, a signed copy of of the their newest vinyl because I spent so much money that she felt bad. It was really cool. Uh, she also, well, she didn't give me this. I bought a shirt as well, which is pretty it's pretty cool looking, I think. Anyways, um, I did most of the work for this video here in this hotel room. So hopefully it's as good as my other videos. I don't know. I guess it's like if I was locked in a room and all I could do was make a video, this would be it. But I'm headed back tomorrow, so hopefully the hardware for my my main project is in the mail. I hope it's there. Otherwise, uh, I guess I'll figure out what to do for another in-between video. But anyways, thanks for watching this little like blog section. I'm just bored, so have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching.